Good evening, good day, good morning, everyone. I'm Captain Kaurav Rana. I'm from CN Beyond. And uh, this time again, we have another session with Captain Daniel Joseph, with Captain Gajanan. And in this session, we're going to talk about welfare for seafarers, right? Uh, we may, may not have studied or may, even if we had studied, we may not have given so much of attention as to what a seafarer rights are, uh, how can he, uh, whom can he approach, uh, how can he get those rights, right? And the best person to answer these questions is essentially from government authorities and who better than Captain Daniel Joseph. Captain Daniel Joseph has been working with the DJ shipping uh, for some time. He's right now the deputy director general of uh, shipping. He is has an additional in charge of the uh, crew branch as well. Uh, welcome Captain Daniel Joseph uh, uh, in this session. Uh, we also have Captain Gajanan Karanjikar with us. Um, I mean, um, for both of them, I'm sure everyone would know uh, with Captain um, uh, Rajanan, he's been ashore for quite some time. He's worked in port sector. Uh, he advocates blue economy a lot. He has his articles written all over. He teaches in IIM. He's the global ambassador of sustainability. He runs his consultancy in, in Dubai uh, with the name of Cordilla. I mean, uh, he's in the uh, company of Master Mariners. Uh, he, he represents them. So, you know, uh, we, we can go on and on. But Captain, welcome, Captain Gajanan, and great to have both of you uh, in this uh, uh, session. And without wasting much time, let me start with our first question. And this is uh, to you, Captain Daniel. What are the rights that a seafarers have? And where, you know, there are many rights, of course, if you can enumerate a few, and then uh, where can a person see these rights? So how this uh, rights are getting derived from? The rights are getting derived from the Maritime Labor Convention. Maritime Labor Convention gives the minimum labor standards, maritime labor standards, which are required and minimum uh, rights which are available to the seafarers. But it is up to the respective country, respective flag, to ensure that these standards are domesticated in their national legislation. So they can go above the requirements of the rights, but they can't go below the standards which are benchmark, uh, set as a benchmark. So each country has different rights in addition to the Maritime Labor Convention. So please refer to the respective your rights where for India, it is Maritime Labor Convention rules uh, promulgated in 2016. Okay. And there are very various MS notices which are available in the crew branch which deals with their rights. Basic minimum rights are there like rights to fair wages, rights to fair treatment, right to have fair uh, food and accommodation which is as per uh, the MLC, right to have uh, mental well-being uh, and health uh, measures, right to shore leave, these are the basic rights which uh, provides through MLC and these are available in the MLC provisions. And in addition to that, you also please refer to your collective bargain ag agreement which you have signed where it gives all the requirements what are there as per your terms and condition which your seafarer uh, association and your seafarers union has agreed on these conditions. So these are the minimum agreed standards which gives all the rights and terms and conditions so please refer to these standards before you sign on the dotted line so that you know what is going to come when you go on ship thanks a lot sir that's very very helpful thank you how are the international regulations and conventions such as you know just one example mlc actively safeguarding and promoting the rights of seafarers on a national level or and also at a global level? It's a very good question. Uh, if you see uh, MLC 2006, the uh, year itself says that it is since 2006. And uh, we have come a long way now, you know. And uh, all the national and the international authorities which, which are watching as a watchdog 
have been actively participating in this response to the seafarers and safeguarding their interest. If you can see on a national level, India has ratified this uh, convention, Maritime Labor Convention, and is actively involved in the seafarers' uh, welfare and seafarers' well-being. Uh, from the uh, directorate perspective, I can say uh, there are a lot of activities which are going on for the seafarers' welfare. In the agenda, I can tell you top two, three uh, things which are on the platform. is One is related to the grievance redressal module. So we are going to have a very, very user-friendly grievance redressal module. At present, there are modules available, but it is all scattered, you know. Uh, information comes and where it goes and who is monitoring there is no track so what we are going to have a, it it is going to be a consolidated uh, uh, module where a person can call or send a message or whatsapp it he will get a unique tracking number and as soon as the track number comes he will get all the details what all uh, he can choose from the details and what is his grievance and it will be tracked and the solution will be given within 24 hours. So this module is going to come within two, three months. We are uh, we are working on this module and this will also have a crisis module, uh, CDC related uh, module, the seafarers issues related model. It will have some all sub C sub uh, kind of modules, you know, where it is all integrated and uh, seafarer will be helped uh, and uh, he will get a quick response the our motto is every soul at sea is important you know so with that mantra we are moving ahead and there are a lot of other activities like uh, we are uh, through seafarer welfare fund society which is a uh, trust under the ages of dg shipping we are promoting the seafarers welfare club you know and we are working tireless, tirelessly to get this thing out so that uh, some guidelines can come and then port can have respective welfare uh, uh, boards and they will monitor uh, these ports. So we are our plan is to start with major ports, their fundings, and then uh, subsequently, because these welfare facilities will be inside. So I had a meeting with JNPA and BPT officials. So these welfare facilities which are inside their SOP is so stringent that seafarers can't come inside, which is the welfare club, which is inside. Even for that, they are not, not they are asking for short passes. So we have revised this, <clears throat> revised SOP is given so that at least for the welfare club, they can come. This uh, seafarer short leave issue, which is the third thing which I was about to say, this is a very touchy issue, which is very sensitive. So we are working tirelessly on this to get this uh, thing out. Uh, so I've been discussing with Captain Gajanan the, from his uh, his team also that uh, we'll be meeting the director of FRRO here who controls the all FRROs so that uh, we can have a meeting and find solutions. And also uh, we are going to uh, put up this case where seafarers are the essential workers as per the Essential Maintenance Act 1968. So it is clearly clarified that seafarers are very, very precious and they are essential part of essential services. So uh, DG shipping has already declared them as key, key workers. So then uh, as per if this circular issue issued, issued by the uh, MHA because the immigrations are controlled by MHA. So already the talks are there. So one to one meeting has to be done. Uh, with the MHA secretary so that a circular is issued and it is formed uniformly applied throughout the country so that seafarer shore leave issue can be addressed. So th these are the top three issues which we are aggressively working and uh, we want solution within one or two months. And on the international level, as you know, ILO, IMO, uh, continuously they are uh, having meetings, they are coming with circulars, uh, welfare facilities and all these are being worked out, you know. So, Indian national level and global level, this is the brief which I can give you on. Great, sir. Just a follow-up follow -up question on the grievance redressal. Um, would this be uh, through an app or through a, a website? And, uh, you know, uh, is there a timeline by which you will uh, the, the, this would be answered? Excellent. This is a good question. 
So I just give you a brief on this. Uh, if you want, I can share the presentation also how it will happen. So it will be web based and also app based. So people can uh, immediately, it will be, if there is a call, it will be immediately answered because we will have a toll free number and it will be a dedicated number and it will be manned by persons who will be picking up the call 24 cross 7. Okay, that is one thing. The second thing is uh, in the uh, grievance port, uh, portal, if it is done, it will be immediately responded because it is being manned. You know? right. So at present, uh, there is DGCOM uh, center, but it is not uh, that user friendly because now we have come in this advanced stage of uh, digital technology. You know, So we want to give everything. So our aim is to also have different language options in the English will be there but other options also we are planning to incorporate you know so the uh, the the timeline regarding this module is it's a very very um, uh, difficult uh, processes which are involved but uh, we are sure but by three four months we should be rolling this out quickly great thank you thank you so thank you very much to daniel and first of all thank you see on beyond captain gaurav rana taking this initiative of you know interviewing the directly, you know, the captain, Daniel Joseph, who is also a custodian of seafarers' welfare now. And, you know, talk about seafarers' rights. I, I personally feel that somehow, you know, in comparison with the other industries, seafarers' rights, you know, with the other industry workers, we are, we are on the back seat. We are really falling back into the, you know, being vocal about. Maybe because, I mean, we have a small crowd of, you know, three, three, four lakh seafarers, active seafarers. Uh, you know, uh, in shipping, that could be one of the reasons with compared to the population of India, industry workers probably count to more than six, seven crores today. So, uh, but, you know, having said that, and and again, congratulating you for taking up the seafarers issues, including grievances, welfare, mental well-being. You know, much is talked about mental well-being and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, seafarers welfare. One particular thing, you know, which, which struck the, you know, the, the bell was the seafarer's right to fair wages, fair treatment. You know, this is something which is the, which is the flag state. Again, you know, you are the custodian of seafarer's welfare. So how does the flag state look into it? Why am I asking you this question? Because I'm also a flag inspector of Panama flag. And I come across many cases. Yesterday, even on, on board vessel, I saw a violation with respect to work hours, rest hours on ship. You know, so when, when, uh, see, that goes as a deficiency on a ship. But what does a flag state can do this for, for this? What can ship owner do for, I mean, for this? You know, that's very important. So from a flag state perspective, what do you think are the plans to protect these rights of seafarers of fair wages, fair treatment, and, you know, proper rest work hours on board? Yes, this is a very, very touchy <laughs> subject. Even such kind of questions I have not got in during my extra master's preparation. <laughs> so I have to think out of uh, pulling up my gray, gray hairs. But uh, the, the, the additional uh, thing what works in my favor is because I am a, a flag state inspector and PSC inspector also because I additionally look after this crew thing. So I can tell you, uh, we are very, very strict uh, with the rest hours and uh, wages, you know. If we see there is, because our requirements are very clear, DMLC and uh, part one and part two, the requirement is very clear. Minimum wages uh, uh, has to be met. The CBA model agreement has been given. And also we are working on this. There is a committee which is working tirelessly on this. Uh, already three, four meetings have been uh, done. So we are coming up with a model agreement where this will have dynamic uh, uh, kind of thing where the wages will be set the wage committee will decide you know and then this will be promulgated where the seafarer has to get minimum this if you can see if if you find that seafarers are uh, unfairly treated and they are not getting these wages you know so then um, the seafarer has full rights to complain as i told you these numbers are there and if we are finding these these things we are very strict on this you know the rpsl is taken to task the company is also taken to task even even we are thinking to uh, in mmd mumbai we have started like uh, if they are not we if you find that wages are not being paid we promulgate these people list in the website you know 
so we are very very strict with these people where the minimum requirement has to be met you know so and especially uh, the port state control regime we are very strict we monitor the rest hours period and if there is a uh, violation it is straight away detention you know and we are very strict on these uh, mlc aspects and especially on the shore leave aspects also which i was telling so we have started giving code 17 so till the till the uh, <laughs> Code 17 is not closed, the vessel cannot sail out. The people have to go ashore, they have to take uh, uh, their welfare activities and get rest, and then only it is because it's a safety issue for the vessel. You know? So, we are very strict on this, and we are working uh, from all angles so that this can be pushed up. And also, we work closely with the ITF uh, inspectors which are there, you know for the port so we work with the them also closely so that they give keep giving us information because the seafarer uh, has a notion that immediately they have to go to itf you know first so anyway that is also fair enough they can go to union and from the union we keep getting information that this vessel is problem this owner is particularly problem so we are very clear if it is indian so we cancel their we suspend the doc and then we take them for task that bank guarantee if it is rtsl is taken care of but then Everybody has to work in unison towards the structure where they know that vessels should have P and I valid P and I so that the claims can be settled. So these are all the challenges which are there. But but we have to all authorities have to work together to come out of this uh, thing and help the seafarers cause. That's good to know. Just for the viewers, those who may not know what is code 17. So code 17 is a deficiency that you must rectify before departure. Your vessel will not be able to sail uh, in, 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 if you have not uh, rectified the code 17. So, so that's a great, great initiative and, you know, getting uh, short leave into it. Uh, wow. I mean, that's, that's probably one of the best things that can happen to a seafarer from every point of view. So, so. Thank you. Just a joinder to what uh, we know uh, Daniel spoke on this. You know, uh, there's one more thing which you know uh, Daniel, if you could uh, launch into the system of you know fair treatment to seafarers. A lot of seafarers get caught on very wrong things. Like yesterday, I tell you, I mean, you know, a uh, thing happened which I was. I mean, I I do a flag inspection, but I my most of the time is gone and giving them lecture <laughs> and then educating them because this is what is the date. So I was telling one of the you know uh, I mean chief engineers who, who made did not make an entry of you know some of the things in oil record book where I told him when he then he said saying that this is not mine this is somebody else's so I told him this is so we need to aware make seafarer aware of what can go wrong then only that fair treatment will come the seafarer himself doesn't know I mean this guy was from Myanmar so okay of course I told him but even for the Indian seafarers and good chief engineers also for that matter. They don't see what the predecessor has done. But the ship is caught in their time. And then we all become you and cry about you know criminalization of seafarer and things like that. But where seafarer himself has faltered, that's one point you somehow, you know, in our education system, somewhere we should take it as to how the fair treatment, you know, diplomatic relations that DG shipping can through MEA have with the countries where the, the seafarers caught like this without any mistake of this also can be treated well towards the you know justice and you know, honest uh, this thing uh, release of theirs. Thank you. Oh, very well said. And I'll, I'll just continue on what you had uh, earlier mentioned, Captain Gajanan. Um, right of seafarers. You had earlier mentioned about fair wages, about working hours, and uh, you know, in continuation of it, um, there may be a time, uh, and I hope it. This is um, you know, in the right spirit. There could be a person who may. Because of any global situation like, you know, what we have had COVID or because of any, you know, uh, onboard situation, he may want a prompt repatriation, right? Uh, it could be because of uh, working conditions. It could be treatment. So is there, you know, any which way if a person wants, you know, repatriate, want to be promptly repatriated, uh, is there any right for him and how, how are other, you know, bodies supporting it, please? Yes, if you can see, that's why the CBA comes in picture here, collective bargaining agreement. The seafarers should know because I go on ships and I, I find CBAs are not available, you know. So these CBAs are supposed to be on board and seafarers are supposed to know what is their rights, what are the terms and conditions they have agreed. The seafarer is so 
so down and down the lane so that he is not aware the crew manager has given and he has signed as per the collective agreement but then he then something happens on board then only they know oh, there is something called cba and they have to be guided by this there are minimum requirements laid down like this many uh, months they have to uh, Uh, finish on board then they were there will be one way deduction because there are agencies there are costs involved you know if it is a medical then it is allowed if there is an emergency it is allowed it's all depend upon this collective bargain agreement which or the seafarers employment agreement as per which the seafarers has agreed to join the ship so seafarer has to be very careful Uh, uh, sorry to say this, but our seafarers, uh, I'm all, we are all all seafarers, but we don't like to read, you know. So we have to have this habit of reading. You know what is that? Read, read, read. Kisi ko padne ka nahi hai, sir. Hai sign karti hai. Then when you are struck, when you are struck there, like uh, we are working, Captain Kajana, then we are working on this Med Sea Fox case in in uh, Dubai when the vessel is for so long. So there we realize. Ki that P and D certificate is not valid. People have not seen this. These are the things which, after incident, uh, post mortem, करके क्या फायदा है? You have to see when you go on ship before going on. When you go to company, you should ask sir C B A दिखाओ. So the company also knows. No, okay, you are also reading. So these are your rights, and you should read your C B A and S C A before you sign the dotted line. It is it is very unfair. On both part, from the seafarers and owners part, that you go on board and you tell you won't follow this because you have agreed to this, you know. Right. So essentially, what you are saying is that the repatriation is basically as per contract that you have between you and your company. So you should go through it. Uh, you should uh, agree to it. Uh, you should be aware of it before you sign it, and and that's where the CBA comes into play. Yeah. Thank, thank you for those insight, and it's very important. So this is for all of the viewers. Uh, I mean, one, there are persons who are notorious. We're not liking it. घर की याद आ रही है तो हम लोग अब sign off कर दो, sign off कर दो. Please don't get um, you, you know involve any other person, or please don't have those requests. If you have a commitment for four months, six months, three months, please try to fulfill that as much as possible. but if for genuine and absolute genuine reasons you have to sign off refer to your cba you know if you need help call call uh, the numbers which we have mentioned in the comment window then seek help but please as far as possible try and you know uh, uh, fulfill your commitment at the time of joining which you had so i i keep getting calls huh? sir ek hafta extend ho gaya mereko next port i don't know i want to get down i keep getting calls नो हमारे टाइम पे आई डोंट वांट टू टेल हमारे टाइम पे वी नो हाउ हाउ लॉन्ग वी वर सेलिंग एंड देयर वाज मतलब दूर दूर तक पता नहीं रहता है कब जहाज से निकलने वाले हैं नाउ सी आई एग्री आवर डेज वर डिफरेंट बट प्लीज हैव पेशेंस दैट पेशेंस थिंग इज लैकिंग यू नो सी इफ इफ इट इज अ नोटोरियस ओनर एंड यू हैव अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ सच थिंग देन देयर इज अनदर थिंग वेयर यू इन्वॉल्व आईटीएफ यू इन्वॉल्व यूनियन यू इन्वॉल्व द फ्लैग स्टेट एंड एवरीथिंग बट व्हेन इट इज अ genuine owner they know you are with uh, them for example one company i just got a call uh, i don't want to name the company for obvious reason he is a bosun for 15 years can you believe and he is telling sir uh, the first time i am sailing with uh, multinational crew i am not able to cope up i want to sign off the first thing i told okay no problem did you called your company or did you told your master no sir so at least follow the procedures no then i called the company bolta sir he is such a nice guy he has been 15 years with our company is such a senior the next day he tells sir i was tensed uh, uh, i wrote to you that uh, and his main reason was uh, that he was made to work more and during saturday or uh, they were having drills see this can be a very silly reason but imagine uh, the amount of stress he has gone through and he he could have jumped luckily he called up you know so we could save this but see such kind of reasons comes so please think carefully before you call and if you are having issues discuss with your company because they are your um, um, uh, employers no they have taken you they, it is their first responsibility to, to attend to you you know if they don't attend 
there will be a problem for themselves you know so they will take care of you first approach them if they are not approaching approach the other numbers which are always available and we are always there so but but have that patience to understand the situation you know so please please be patient and one thing i want to underline and tell you, through your viewers that please be careful what you do it will have a repercussions on the indian's image no right. world over because we are a labor supplying country imagine one owner badi mushkil se he has taken you and put indians he is giving a trial and imagine you do this and you get out of this thing such kind of thing then they will tell okay indians are like that only they will do only one month and uske baad koi bhi nakhra karke they will get out of the ship so imagine how much job loss the indians your fellow seafarer will lose so please think carefully you are the brand image of the country outside especially for the for uh, seafarers working on foreign ships please be very 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 careful with your actions you are carrying your badge of the country outside world so please be very careful and perform where we can get more and more employment to our indian seafarers you're absolutely right i mean what you're saying is you know i mean no no wonder people really call you care for seafarers since your forte because like we can see the pain in your voice you, you know the, the urgency in your your talks and and as you rightly said about the you know people calling you is also very justified because on this is the other set of replication of awareness and people want to trade in the companies by calling digi shipping directly you know so so where then they know that digi shipping cannot sign them off i mean unless there's a violation so so that kind of awareness it will take some time to bring it out in seafarers as to whom to call whom not to call why are you calling somebody as Like I also look after radio. I also get few calls like this from seafarers, sir. Khana thik nahi hai. We want to sign off. We are in distress. So that word has become very cheap. And because of welfare, you know, I mean, I could never utter a word of distress till the time I became master on board. And I mean, of course, after after becoming master also, because I couldn't even accept that word as on my own board. And distress is there. No, there's no distress. But today, people just call up on the hotline and say, sir, we are in distress. They don't understand the real meaning of it. Probably our education system has to be blamed for it. So anyway, Daniel, I mean, this is a excellent talks that you today you gave. I would like, uh, I mean, Gaurav to sum it up. Sure. No, absolutely. I think this is great discussion. And uh, as as you also said, Captain Gajanan, that uh, you know, at our time, maybe uh, I'm junior to you, but still at our time, you know, that depression, uh, these things, even if you are facing, you would never think about it. and at some time what happens is persons cross the line even if it's not there then it's maybe made a little bit uh, hopeless so we have to be you know and that's where awareness comes into the play that right? you know you need to be aware of what you are facing and then accordingly you know approach to the through the right medium